Okay, this is our introduction to the uh, online anger management education course. Um, in this video, I'm just going to cover uh, some of the basic information concerning anger management from a, just as an introduction. And then in upcoming videos, as well as the readings, we will flesh out some of these ideas. Okay, uh, first of all, I always like to start with a couple definitions. Uh, associated with um, words that we use with anger management. Um, and three words in particular are um, anger, aggression, and hostility. So we talk about anger. Again, anger is the emotion we feel um, when we get upset about something or we feel that our rights has been violated. The thing about anger, however, is that anger in and of itself is not bad it's not negative some people um believe that um anger is a problem and anger causes problems in our lives but in fact it's actually our behavior associated with the anger or our um reaction to the anger that ends up getting us in trouble but it's not because we happen to become angry angry by itself can be positive or negative depending on how we use it. Um, for example, um, any significant change that has came throughout uh, history and society has come due to someone uh, being upset about the way that the situation was and felt that they needed a change. And their anger motivated them to take action and sometimes gave them the courage to take action and to do things uh, differently or make other people do things differently, including the government. So um, when we talk about anger or for the purpose of this class, we're not trying to eliminate anger from our lives or we're not trying to, uh, let's say, learn how to never get angry. Um, I don't think that that is possible that you're never gonna get angry, nor uh, would it be beneficial? Because there are some things that we should get angry about. However, we should um, address those issues in the appropriate manner. And that's part of what the anger management is all about. So anger, again, is just the emotion uh, that we uh, have when we become upset or we feel that our rights have been violated. Another word that's closely associated with anger and sometimes used interchangeably would be aggression. Now, aggression is the behavior, right? So anger is the emotion. Aggression is the behavior that we display when we're upset. And uh, generally, aggression is going to be negative, and that's what we're going to get in trouble for when we act out aggressively rather than assertive. So aggression can be in the form of verbal such as um, uh, using profanity or calling someone out of their name. Um, it can be threats uh, directed towards the person or people. It can be uh, physical aggression, such as uh, kicking, hitting, biting the person, shooting, stabbing, and so on and so forth. But aggression is generally what we get in trouble for, not the anger. So one of the things or one of our objectives in anger management is to learn how to deal with situation in a non-aggressive manner. And it's also uh, not helpful if we're passive. Passive is uh, basically just allowing people to do whatever and to uh, just kind of run over you. That's also not helpful because ultimately, while we may not initially get in trouble, uh, from being passive, ultimately it's going to escalate our anger. So if you are uh, someone and you're just being quiet and, and not standing up for yourself, eventually you're going to uh, blow a fuse, right? We have to, uh, at some point, we have to be able to address the issue. Otherwise, it becomes overwhelming. 
So while we don't want to be aggressive, we also don't want to uh, be passive. Now, the other word associated with anger that's very important is hostility. Hostility is an attitude. So again, anger is a emotion. Aggression is a behavior and hostility is an attitude that we have. <clears throat> and the way that I like to explain um, hostility, I like to use the idea of get gangs or race, right? And, and the reason I use these two is because um, they're pretty much going to be familiar with anybody that hear them. You know, it's not some uh, uh, far-fetched concept that someone's going to have to put a lot of work to figure out. Um, so in the case of gangs, for example, um, when someone uh, joins a gang, whether they get jumped into their gang or however they get into their gang, one of the first things that they're going to learn uh, as a part of that gang is who their enemies are, who, the, who are the people that their particular gang does not get along with. And over time, because your gang don't get along with them, you begin to develop a certain amount of uh, a certain attitude towards this group that your gang don't get along with. Now, it's it's different than anger because generally um, when we get angry with someone, it's someone that we have that have done something to us or maybe even they've done something to someone else and we observe them do it and we're angry with them be due to their actions, whereas hostility is just a general attitude of dislike, right? We we dislike this person, this person or people, and have a negative opinion about them. So um, the reason, or one of the reasons that that's important, is that if I have hostility towards a particular individual or a particular group of people, then it is highly likely that. I'm going to become angry with them much faster than I would with anyone else, right? Because I already have this level of hostility towards them and I feel a certain way. Therefore, um, anything that they say and do, I'm going to interpret it in the worst possible way. So um, again, whether uh, the gang or race is the same thing. And, and I say gangs and race because, you know, some of us grow up um, with, uh, uh, certain feelings or we're taught certain things about uh, particular individuals from uh, other racial groups. And we may, over time, we begin to internalize these messages that people are giving us about these groups. And we develop, similar to gangs, this attitude, this negative attitude or this negative general dislike for this a person or group of people over time. And again, it's going to cause us to um, become upset with this person or people faster than we would with anyone else. And it increases the likelihood that we're going to be willing to act out violently against this uh, person or these people, which is obviously not helpful. So um, anger the emotion that we feel when we become upset or we feel our rights have been violated. Aggression is the behavior that we display when we react rather than respond to anger. And uh, hostility is an attitude that we develop uh, towards uh, people that we don't like. And all of these are important in the, in the context of anger management. And all of these words are sometimes used interchangeably, such as we may hear uh, someone say, oh, he approached this individual in a very hostile manner. But in reality, he, re he maybe approached him in a very aggressive manner, right? Because hostile is the attitude. Now, in general conversation, I don't, you know, I'm not going to nitpick over words that someone chooses to use. But for the purpose of purposes of these lessons, I would like us to make a distinction between these words because I think that it gives us a, a clearer idea of what exactly 
um, we're trying to address. And also to a, a, a better understanding of what we're trying to explain, if we're trying to explain what we feel towards uh, someone, if someone asks us why did we do uh, a certain thing or why do we feel a certain way, it just kind of expands our vocabulary and as, as well as our understanding, right? And I would also uh, encourage you uh, if you do have an anger management issue to do further reading. Don't just, not just uh, the, the things that you're going to learn in the course that you're going to do with me, but I would encourage you to do further readings. Um, there are numerous uh, books out there that will help you with your uh, anger. There are uh, free material as well as some books that you can purchase. Um, one particular book uh, that's published on the SAMHSA website uh, is Anger Management for Substance Abuse, or, excuse me, Substance Use Disorder and Mental Health Clients, right? And they have the therapy manual as well as the uh, workbook that you can download for free online, right? And that's on the SAMS Hub website, S-A-M-H-S-A, -S the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration. Um, they have a lot of free material for substance abuse, uh, substance use disorders, as well as uh, anger management and other issues that, that you may be addressing in recovery. Also, if you happen to be uh, counselor, let's say, or you plan on getting into counseling, they have a lot of very helpful material um, that you can use to uh, help you uh, to further your career, um, personal development, or again, address your, your anger issues if that's what you're trying to do. Um, so I, I would definitely suggest that you uh, read the material and and anything that we um, discuss in this course as well, I would advise you to uh, practice some of the concepts or maybe certain key points, um, writing down certain key points so that you can incorporate them into your life. Because the thing about it is this, um, we won't do the things that are not familiar to us, right? We do the things that that we do regularly, things that have become a habit. And that's why some of us have we have be, we have developed a habit of acting out aggressively or acting out violently with our anger. And, you know, maybe there are things that we picked up as far back as our childhood. But these are things that we have done habitually. So now they come second nature. So instead of um, us thinking about a situation and trying to address it in the most uh, appropriate way, we tend to lash out with anger because this is what we have done habitually. So now we're trying to learn new habits, right? And that's the purpose of this course. And this this course right here that, that you're um, uh, uh, dealing with, this is uh, this is my basic uh, course, right? So this is this is just the beginning, and there will be uh, other courses more advanced. Uh, where we will address the issues that are contained in this course, but we will expand on uh, some of the conversations that we have uh, about particular aspects of anger. And so what I'm going to do, uh, or what you will do throughout this course, you will, um, I will provide you with um, videos that you will be able to watch because some people um, may have problems reading and understanding what they read properly. So um, you will be able to watch it on a video, but I will also transcribe each video. So you will also have access to a uh, written copy of what's in the video. And, and, and a lot of the uh, PDF documents will be uh, a direct transcription of what's in the video with maybe um, a couple edits or so where, where maybe I misspoke as, as we were doing the video. So um, definitely uh, take advantage of those uh, resources. But anyway, uh, moving forward. So um, talking about anger, as I mentioned, this is an um, introductory video. So um, I'm going to just mention some, some 
basic concepts. And over the, the following videos, we will flesh out some of those ideas. Okay. Uh, so um, with anger, some of the things that we're going to address are the events and cues, right? So when we talk about events and cues, these are things that have a tendency to get us upset. Events are, are like events or provocative uh, situations or um, events that people do that we tend to interpret in a negative way and we get upset about. Cues are the signs that we have that we're becoming angry. So as you um, begin to uh, get angry, right, uh, something will happen and we will begin to interpret what um, happened in that situation. Generally, we will ten have a tendency to, to interpret it in the most negative way. Now, also, I should say also, um, because we talk about an event that happened and then we interpret it and we begin to get angry based on our interpretation. But something else that should be taken into consideration is our individualized worldview, which I'm not going to get too deep into that, but just know that we all have a certain way that we look at the world, whether positive or negative uh, way that we look at the world, um, the ideas and things that we think that are possible for us. And, and, and this worldview, the reason why it's important is because it will, um, before anything ever happens, right, we will be in a certain state of mind that may not be helpful to our situation just based on the way that we look at the world. So um, I need to have a clear understanding if I have, uh, let's say, if I operate according to a victim mentality, let's say, right? Because if I do operate according to a victim mentality, then it's highly likely that I'm going to have a lot of issues with my anger. And it's going to be very difficult for me to um, even educate myself and to address these anger issues because if I think that I'm a victim, then I think that my anger and my aggression is justified, which it's not, right? We, we do have a right to defend ourselves, but we have to do it in the most appropriate way. So when we're talking about cues, we have um, uh, physical cues, behavioral cues, uh, emotional cues, and cognitive cues. And, and so out of these four cue categories, it, it is the behavioral cues is the only one out of the four Q categories that are observable by, <clears throat> by other people. And sometimes people will get um, uh, the physical cues and the behavioral cues, they will uh, get those mixed up. Or if you ask someone um, what was a, a physical cue, what are the physical cues that they're becoming angry, they will have a tendency to, to mention a behavioral cue, right? And the behaviors are like balling up your fist, pacing back and forth, slamming the door, um, yelling or screaming or such, right? These are behavioral cues and they can be observed by other people. Physical cues are those things that um, affect us, such as your heart rate beginning to increase, you starting to sweat. You know, there are things that are physically happening to your body, involuntary things that are happening to your body. And you know that they're happening or you can tell if you're mindful, you can tell that they're happening, but other people cannot see them. Right. And then we have emotional cues. Now, the reason that emotional cues are important is because when we're talking about emotional cues, anger is considered as a secondary emotion. So that means that there are other more primary emotions that lead us to anger. And we need to understand what those primary emotions are if we want to be able to address our anger. And the reason that our uh one of the reasons that anger is a secondary emotion is because anger is one of our defense mechanisms against feeling vulnerable. That's why when you see like fighters or boxers, for example, they will have a tendency to pump themselves up when they're getting ready for a fight because um, they're, they are getting into their zone. And what are you doing when you're pumping yourself up? You're getting yourself angry. Now, not to an unreasonable degree, but you are, in fact, getting yourself in a somewhat angry state so that you get in your zone and you have the courage and to step into the ring and to handle your business in that situation. OK, and then um, 
we have the cognitive cues. So cognitive, um, anytime you hear the word cognitive, you know, think of like cognitive behavioral therapy, right? So cognitive is talking about the way that we think, right? So the cognitive cues are the thought patterns that will come up as we begin to get angry. Sometimes even before we recognize the fact that we're becoming angry, we start having these negative images or negative fantasies in our minds that um, will let us know that it's that, hey, maybe I need to find out what's kind of going on with me emotionally because I'm having these negative thoughts, which are not helpful. Um, okay, we're going to talk a little bit about um, the aggression cycle as well, um, because again, as we uh, get angry, it's not the case where uh, like when I was growing up, I just felt that I was just angry, you know, okay, I, something happened, I'm angry, and it's just automatic, zero to 10 automatic, but that's not the way it happened. Everything happens with a process. There's a process for everything. And if I begin to recognize the process, then again, I can begin to address the issues associated with anger that is causing problems for me in my life that are sending me to prison or put me on probation or parole or causing me to have, um, you know, uh, domestic uh, um, violence type issues and stuff. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the ABCD model. Um, uh, we're going to deal with, you know, general uh, concepts concerned uh, uh, assertiveness and uh, conflict resolution. And, and we're going to have uh, a little bit where we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the family in general. And there'll be some other topics that we will um, cover uh, as we uh, go through the, the different lessons, right? Um, and hopefully um, you will be able to get some benefit out of these lessons. Um, I personally am someone who have had um, issues with my anger uh, and the things that I'm talking to you about are things definitely that were able to help me. Um, my anger led me to prison as a juvenile. Um, I was back and forth in juvenile hall, juvenile placement. And ultimately at the age of 17, I got a life sentence and ended up serving uh, 21 years in prison, right? Due to me not handling my anger appropriately. And then even after incarceration, it continued to cause problems because I handled my anger inappropriately. And now, um, as I um, use some of the techniques that I will um, be sharing with you, I have been able to be out here in the community. I am no longer on any kind of uh, supervision, probation, parole, or anything like that. Um, I have my own uh, business. I work also as a, a manager for an alternative sentencing program. Um, and I have a, a several different uh, things that are going on in my life and things are, are going as well as the effort that I put into them, right? And, um, and, and we'll talk about that a little bit as we uh, address the different lessons, because um, as this is obviously an anger management um, education course, however, I will discuss other um, issues, right? Because it's those other issues or those peripheral issues sometimes that uh, lead us to anger. And therefore, we will address some of those. I will address um, some of the things, um, you know, so I will mention briefly uh, some of the things concerning the political climate and how that contributes to our anger sometimes, um, the things that we see on TV or in the media and stuff like that. So um, as we move forward with the courses, we will um, hopefully gain the knowledge that um, will keep all of us um, out of undesirable situations such as uh, prisons, jails, and other types of institutions. So again, I would encourage you to um, practice, maybe take notes and practice the uh, things that you learn in these lessons. Also, at the end of each lesson, um, there will be a quiz and uh, you will have a uh, final quiz as well. So, um, Hopefully you get benefit from the course and
Let's do it. Thank you.